Discover how God is prophetically uniting Jews and Christians across the world today on The Crossover. Here are your hosts, Mitch and Rosalie. We're in our studios and uh, we're back from Germany. A very impactful time. Not a vacation, but a definite work time. And it was very uh, meaningful to both of us, but especially to Rosalie being a second generation Holocaust survivor going to Germany. So um, let's let her share with us some of the things that went through her mind and things that she had to work through. So share with us, what, what did it mean to you to go to Germany? First of all, I never in a million years ever wanted to go to Germany. In fact, my heart's desire has been to take you to Switzerland and show you where I lived for three years and go to the Alps and all of that. And uh, In fact, we were going to go visit our children in Seattle, you know, this and uh, when Pastor Jobst Bittner came to Houston and he spoke uh, about this uh, march of life, making a star of David over eastern Germany and to pray over the areas where the death marches were and so much evil was done to the Jews, um, I was totally impressed that a German group of Christians were doing such a thing. And uh, in my mind I thought, that's a wonderful thing for others to do. I would never be interested in going, but what happened was um, I was filming his talk and at the end of his talk he started praying. So as he was praying, I figured the talk is over, I'll start zooming out and close this part of the program. But as I was zooming out, he said, if there are any second or third generation survivors here, I want to personally as a German apologize to you for the sins of my ancestors and my my family and all Germans and in my mind I thought well that's nice you know but in the spirit realm uh, Pastor Jobs Bittner is a real prayerful person and there's authority in his prayers is what we've learned since we've been in Germany but I didn't know that uh, and as all of a sudden the presence of God was so strong in the room uh, that as, uh, as I was zooming out with the camera, I was almost getting slain in the spirit and almost fell physically backwards from the power and the, of the Holy Spirit in the room. He did, so, there was such something that happened to me in that room. And uh, you didn't come with me that night, but um, I, I drove back home, went, and that next, I stayed up late at night, which I do a lot with editing and such, and um, when I woke, I woke up very early for me, around quarter to six in the morning, and I woke up with like this shield, this like, or an impregnation spirit feeling, I don't know how to explain it, right over here around my gut and all, and I knew in my spirit that uh, we were supposed to go to Germany and be a part of this march of life. Uh, I knew the majority of it was for my own <coughs> personal <laughs> healing. <sighs> because uh, here we are producing a program that is focusing on healing relationships between Jews and Christians. And uh, how could I produce a program a program focusing on that if I myself haven't healed my relationship or my trust in Germans or German Christians even and I felt that it, we had to go even if we didn't video a, at all so I would be healed in that so we can produce better programs and also for my our own my own self um, but I also knew we needed to document it, considering what they're doing. You know, Mitch, you and I, we interview many Holocaust survivors, and they tell their side of the story. Um, I have never in a million years thought I would ever get to interview uh, descendants of Nazis repenting and weeping and asking for forgiveness for what their family members did in Germany and asking for forgiveness uh, for their nation and all, from, to God and to, uh, to Jews. There were about 12 Jews that came to that March of Life. We were one of them. We, we were Americans. two of them, 12 Americans. About half of us were Jewish. 
and of course two Holocaust survivors. So, so why don't you uh, share I, with us what happened in that room in Leipzig? Well, what I want to say be, before that is the other side of it, which was a miracle, is that you, babe, rarely like to take off a lot of time from work, and we took off you know, two and a half weeks, and that was another sign. And people started giving money to it, and it was just obvious that it was important to go. A lot of people saw the merit in us being there with the cameras. Yeah, for their sake, by, uh, and for uh, you know, the sake of the crossover. So share with us. It was more of a personal experience for you. You realized that you had to go for your own healing, not knowing what that meant but you learned pretty quickly what that was going to mean in the first day of the church event organizing and the praise and worship and why don't you share with us that day in Leipzig? Well I will say that um, I felt that peace before going but as the week, the week just before leaving for Germany all of a sudden the fears started to come. Fears of being hurt. I will tell you that, you know, before even going. There was fear and trepidation. And I was starting to get people were emailing me scriptures that were very important that built me up. Um, but anyway, fear uh, of being personally hurt. Yes, I just felt a lot of fear about going to that land. It was very strange. Um, so. So when you say hurt, physically, emotionally. Uh, just I don't know. I just felt fear. It was a lot. I don't know what it was going to a place where Jews were almost totally annihilated. That's a, who would want to go there? Okay. So we're in Leipzig, we're in a church, wonderful praise and worship and a lot of teaching and organization going on. And what happened at the end of the evening? Well, it was my birthday, it was August 9th. And uh, it was my 50th birth, I was, 50 years. Uh, I was actually turning 51, but uh, it's like my jubilee year was 50. And the way I've been standing on that 50th year is that everything that Satan would had tried to dis, uh, take from me and destroy uh, would be returned and healed. And uh, <clears throat> on my birthday on August 9th, my 51st birthday, uh, I was filming uh, Peter Loth, who's a Holocaust survivor, who was born in a concentration camp, and uh, he had such intense experiences, uh, a lot of uh, rape and just terrible beatings and through most of his life, uh, even after the, uh, the war as an orphan in Poland. Uh, they still put stars of David on the Jewish children and treated them differently than the other orphans. And it was just one thing after another he was sharing with everyone. And after he would say some terrible atrocities that people were doing because he was Jewish, then he would look at this crowd. Now, this crowd of people are 70% of the people of Jobs Bittner's church are descendants of SS and Nazis. So I'm in the back, I'm not seeing the faces of these people, but he is, Peter is, and when he was uh, speaking these atrocities, um, he would then look at everyone and say, would you forgive? He'd say another terrible thing, that how could anybody who could live through five of these things, they would be insane. And then he would look at them all and say, would you forgive? And I know that I noticed people on the side of me, I started hearing weeping and mourning and moaning, people going on their knees, just losing it. And the guilt and the repentance that they were feeling that their families had a part of that. So at a certain point in the room, he said, I want to ask you, he says, I want to ask your, for your forgiveness 